Let's all give Jesus a wonderful round of applause. My friends, this is one more important moment in our lives. Every time that we are going to study the Word of God and listen to what He has to say to learn from the Lord, who has a very meek and humble heart, we must always be very aware because all our attention is necessary, because He will speak. The one who is speaking is the one who created all things. Everything was made by Him. So when He teaches us something that is true, something that is a fact, when He gives us an understanding of the spiritual laws and how they work here, we are receiving the best thing for our lives because this teaching is eternal in our lives. So today we are going to continue in the first book of Thessalonians chapter 5, where we were last studying verse number 23, but we are going to look at 14, but just not yet. There are still many things that we need to do, and it will be a blessing. So I want to start off with the question segment here in our program. Let's take a look at the first question now, shall we? Dr. Soares, a lot of people use Hebrews 7.18 as a doctrine to not give their tithes. Could you explain this passage, please? Actually, it's not a lot of people. There are some who have an understanding of theology and do not like to obey the Lord God. They question this because that passage talks about the priest Melchizedek. But the Bible is very clear in this. Even if the man who wrote Hebrews said something against giving tithes, no one can cancel what has come out of the mouth of Jesus. And Jesus said that we need to give tithes from the mint and the nice and cumin and other plantations. However, they have neglected the weightier matters. They should do this without leaving things undone. This is in Matthew 23:23. So, no one has the right to, and I mean no one, for instance, when men baptize in the name of Jesus, there are those who say we need to baptize in the name of Jesus. Peter said to be baptized in the name of the Lord Christ, in the command of Jesus. But Jesus, to get baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So who am I going to answer to? I will go to the courthouse. I will go to the judge. And then the justice official comes to, to me and he tells me that he's given the verdict. I'm sorry, but the judge is the one who gives the verdicts here, not you. So his words only have value when he's obeying the judge's orders. So the judge did not tell him to give a verdict because the judge is the one who gives the verdict. Jesus said in Matthew 23, 23, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you pay tithes of mint and anise and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. He didn't stop here. If he did, then it would leave people with, with a lot of doubt and they think they don't have to give tithes. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. So we have to do things the correct way always. But there are those who question these things and keep saying things that make no sense at all whatsoever. Let's go to the second question now. Doctor, I have a son that's a Christian just like my entire family, but he started a new relationship with a young lady who's not a Christian. What is the best way for me to deal with this? Well, first off, I think you should get converted because it doesn't seem like you are a Christian yet and you are in great risk. Let me give him a serious exhortation because if you come to perish, even though you desire the best for all your family and wanting to get yourself converted one day, you will be excluded. The concept of intention doesn't work here. Those who are not born in the waters and in the spirit not be able to see nor enter in the kingdom of God. Regarding your son, you have to tell him, my son, I like this doctrine so much, but she does not. Can't you wait a little bit to see if she gets truly converted? Because the Bible, it forbids unequaled yoke, folks. Ah, so I'm unequally yoked with my husband because I got converted and he doesn't want to get converted. Should we separate? No, no, no. You are already married, sister, and you have to fight for your husband's conversion. But those who are not married yet, the Bible does forbid to be unequally yoked. Now, let me ask you this. Does anyone here have any questions for me to answer at all? I don't know everything. There's a sister right there. There you go. Let me explain something here. Many years ago, I started asking questions live. This was about 15 years ago, and I would answer them. Then I noticed that there was a couple that just wanted to be seen. They came here in strange clothes and sat here in the front. Next service, they sat over there. The next one over there, and they were always asking all kinds of questions, so we stopped listening to them, and they disappeared. <laughs> I want questions where I can really help you. So, what is, what is your name, my sister? It is Marilia. What would you like to know, Marilia? 
Well, you see, Dr. Suarez, I read it. I did not understand it. Because some say yes, others say no, but I would like you to explain it. When Moses opened the Red Sea, did the Pharaoh he die or did, not? He did, along with his entire army. They all died in the sea. That is what is written there. The Pharaoh perished there. They walked in into the Red Sea. God was in the front, then he went to the back and did not allow them to get closer. And if they get did get close, the Lord himself would remove the, sc the screws from, from the chariot wheels, the nails would fall and all that. They got really agitated and the sea was there and the Hebrews were crossing it. When the last one crossed through the sea, or in there, did what he had to do. And what happened? The water came down and it was a lot of water. The Pharaoh and all of them perished. Okay, is there anyone else that has a question? The brother on the balcony, what is your question? Dr. Suarez, I have a question. There's a passage in the Bible where it says, Believe in the Lord, and you and your house shall be saved. Uh, does this salvation also include children who are in rebellion and haven't accepted Jesus or even been baptized? Brother, I'm going to tell you what I understand of all of this. There's not one person that can say, uh, um, uh, I have the complete doctrine. Only the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, has this. We have a light, a perception. And sometimes what I do might even be wrong because it's not completed. For many years, I'll answer your question. For many years, I taught a lot of people that faith could remove mountains until the day I learned in the Word of God that this cannot be done. So I preached against it. If you read Mark 11, 22, 23, you will see that what removes mountains are the words that you say after you've been illuminated by the word of God. In this case here, when it says to believe in the Lord God and your house shall be saved, I understand that when a person accepts Jesus, the mantle of salvation is extended to his entire family. I understood this when I was the first one in my house to accept Jesus. My father was far from God. My mother wasn't a Christian. So I started to cry out, Lord God, it is written. I was just a boy. Believe in the Lord God and you and your house shall be saved. I came, save my father, save my mother, save Agilson, save Umberto, Ariet, and Aroldo. They're all brothers and they were all brought to salvation. So this is what I believe in. You believe and the mantle is extended and we have to persevere so that they can come. This is what I understand of this. How about you here in the front? My name is Antonio, Antonio Fortaleza. Fortaleza. Yes, doctor. Fortaleza yeah. in Portuguese means stronghold, folks. I have a question, doctor, because the Bible often tells us a lot of things in singular, but heaven, it's written in the heavens, always in plural. Paul said that he was taken to the third heaven. Are there different heavens? Could well, you explain? The theologians say that the third one is where God's throne is. I don't understand much about these things as well. But the theologians do say that, that the heavens and the Bible also say in Psalm 19 that the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. Let me take a look here because I don't want to recite the wrong way. We have to be certain, certain when we're talking about the word. So let's take a look. The heavens declare the glory of God. So they think that there, there is a third heaven, but I don't even understand that it's the first or the fourth. <laughs> but the third on is where God's throne is because Paul went there. What is your name, friend? Aloiso. What would you like to know, Aloiso? Last year, during the 24 days of fasting we participated, you preached on Isaiah 54.2, which tells us to enlarge our tents of our dwelling place. But how does that work, Dr. Suarez? All of that is through prayer. You feel it from the Lord God. I need to enlarge. Let's take a look at the verse here, Isaiah 54. You can see that it wasn't for no reason that we did those 24 days of fasting. We strived. There were two or three. I was traveling and couldn't be here, but Pastor Jamie did. But Isaiah 54, verse number two. He mentioned this one, and God spoke to his heart, and this is for a reason for your prayers. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. There are people, people that do not want to enlarge their understanding and do not want to enlarge their prosperity. A few days ago, I was speaking to a man and he was very prosperous. And he used to say, no, Dr. Swadis, don't talk about prosperity with me. I already have everything that I need in life and such and such. Then I said, yes, but there's so many children out there in need that could receive help from someone that God is calling, eh? Hey, the, the, let, let, me tell, let me tell you more of the story, then I'm going to stop here. Um, when, when we talk about adoption, for instance, if possible, don't adopt. Help the family. The family lives in poverty and has, f has four children. 
then you are going to take away one of his kids because he has no conditions. There is no greater love than of a mother and father for that child. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to adopt your son by giving you some help every month. You will have to do this and that because the Lord has given your conditions to do so. So once in a while you go there and you visit the family and such, see how they are doing. I think that is a better choice than to take that child away from his family. Well, that's my opinion. But what do we have to do? The Lord called us, then we should go in prayer. And it might be only in the spiritual kingdom for you to have a ministry to help other people, or it might be in the kingdom of prosperity. Only the person in God knows this. And God speaks through his word. So every time you look at the word of God, the Lord will surely speak to you. Let's take a look at a person who was blessed in the name of Jesus. God just healed my spine. What was wrong with your spine, sister? I had a lot of pain in my spine. It was really strong here above my hips. This week, I went to take a tomography, right? And at home, I could only walk with my little crutches. But today, with the eyes of faith, I came here without crutches. And when I got here, I already felt my spine getting better. I couldn't bend this knee as well. So how did you walk before, sister? I walked like this, doctor, all crooked, like this. You had to walk all crooked like yes. that? So walk normally now. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Let's now turn to the first book of Thessalonians 5.14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, and be patient with all. This is a rule that will make you live just fine without any shame, without any condemnation, without any oppression of the enemy. The first thing here is that we have to warn those who are unruly. What is unruly person? It's a troubled person, a person that causes confusion, but it's also those who do not obey the word of God. They do not listen to God's orders. Jesus said that we should examine the Holy Scriptures because in them we find eternal life and they testify about him. There are Christians who don't examine the word. They read the Bible only once in a while, folks. And there are people who spend years without reading the Word of God. Seems like they are afraid of what is in there. I can't be afraid of the Word of God. Quite the opposite. I want to know it because it's our light. It's God speaking into my life. It will teach me what to do. But those who do not follow God's orders, and it's a divine order, folks. Men cannot live on bread alone, but from all the word that come out from the mouth of God. The testimony he gives of what is written. So then I can't be the kind of person that is unruly, that does not follow any orders he gives to all of us. You are not special to the point of God repeating in your head what he already said in the Bible. The correct action is to examine each day or read it daily. You don't have to, to read it a lot. No, just two, three verses. And when you feel that you read enough, start meditation on it. Wait, what do I have to do? I have to warn those who are unruly by calling their attention with love and with kindness. But sometimes these people need a wake-up call. Can't you see that you are wrong, my brother? Doesn't the Bible say this? How can you be doing something like this? Hey, sister, brother, stop doing this. So we have to warn those who are unruly. Brethren, that don't, that don't fulfill their orders. What else does it say here in verse number 14? Comfort the faint-hearted. Those people who are faint-hearted are usually abandoned. No, we have to comfort them, give them solution. To comfort someone means to give solutions. My brother, I want to pray for you. I can see that you are now well in your faith. Now we can pray here and now. Sit down and pray with the person. There are people who want to hold hands and hug, which is useless. God, I am here today to ask for this person's very blessing. You have touched my heart to pray, but pray in a prophetic way. Because many of the words that, that you are going to say will enter like a sword in this person and hurt them. My goodness, it's true. So we should always comfort those who are faint-hearted. And there are many people in this situation. So what else does the Word of God say here? It says to comfort the faint-hearted. What else? Uphold the weak. Those who are weak in faith. This brother is hopeless. Brethren, don't ever say something like that. Don't give false judgment. How can you say that someone who is called by the Lord God is hopeless? He might be going through the greatest trial of his life, and we all go through that. But the trials we face are good, because if we strive in them, 
and, and are victorious aside from the spiritual muscles that we are going to receive. Just like those who go to the gym and lift heavy weights, they will grow some muscles. When we fight spiritual, we will gain spiritual muscles, folks. We will be prepared for the combats up ahead that we will have to face to receive more from the Lord. There are some who are late in this. So if the person is weak in faith, what do we have to do? We have to uphold the weak. We have to help these people. What are you in need of? Open your heart to me, brother. Why aren't you being victorious? And such. I, I told you this, that when I was a young man, I was in prayer meeting that I participated with that lady that I already presented here in TV, who was still steadfast with Jesus, even at 90 years old. There was a man there who the demon always manifested in. Then one day I went up to him and I said, sir, please forgive me, but we are tired of casting out demons from you. How many do you have? No, actually I have a serious disease and I'm about to retire. But until that day comes, I leave the disease here. But after I get retired, I will believe, I said, so you are using a demon so that you can retire? Cut that out. <laughs> a young man rebuking a man who was 60 years old, right? Because he was doing something wrong, folks. But we have to do with those who are weak. Paul says here that we have to uphold them. You can be certain that I will be praying for you. God will give you the blessing. My brother, I am here to help you. You, ha you have to find someone who needs help. Not everyone needs help. There are men who are ignorant and don't want it. But either way, you can help them. If they are faint-hearted, you can go and help them out. If they are weak, you can uphold them. And there is one more thing. Be patient with all. Many times we cast people away from our presence because we get tired of them. But wait a minute. He is my brother in Christ. I need to be patient with everybody, with those who are arrogant. And there are people really taken by the demon of arrogance. Oh, I have to suffer. I have to do this and do this and do that. We have to be patient, folks, because we are the agents of God in this land. It is through us that he is going to bless everybody. I think that these studies will be very good for us, and they have been good. Let me say a prayer now. Dear Father, thank you for this message, for these four revelations that are warning for our lives because, Lord, they are missions that you are giving us, and the church needs them. My God, help your church to be lifted up. We don't just have to, to be well-dressed. When our inside is filthy, Lord, we have to cleanse us from the outside and from the inside so that our exterior will be very well, very well-dressed with the spiritual clothing that you will give to us. Oh, my Lord, so I pray now and unite my faith to break all the evil in these lives. And I order you to get out, leave these people. Don't oppress them anymore. In the name of Jesus, all illness leave right now. All disturbances leave now. Get out malignant oppression. I am determining the blessing. I am rebuking all of the evil. And I say, get out in the name of Jesus. Let's now watch the real life drama in the name of Jesus. One year after I got married, I gave birth to Larissa, so then I stopped working and soon after my husband left his, his job as well, right? So we were both unemployed. Right? And that's when we started fighting a lot and arguing a lot, and so we got separated. I cried a lot because I missed him so much, you know? Especially when it was Father's Day and he wasn't home. I wanted to give him a hug, but I couldn't. I saw that we were spiritually blind at the time. Joseli's husband goes off to live with his grandmother in Rio de Janeiro. On her own, she starts taking a few side jobs to sustain herself. That's when the enemy gets into action. I was in the streets and I was selling some products along with my daughter so that we could support each other. And then that was when a car was passing by and the enemy would tell me to jump in front of it. Last thing I know, I was at my sister's house on my knees, accepting the Lord Jesus, right? I said that I wanted Jesus in my life and I didn't know how that was going to go about, but I knew that the Lord was, the Lord was guiding me. Rosely accepts the Lord Jesus and starts having more intimacy with God. He said that he was going to rebuild my life, rebuild my marriage, and that my husband was going to church with me and praise the Lord with me. 
She would always tell me that we needed to remain steadfast in prayer and seeking God. You're going to fight, you're going to go through many, many trials that you know inside there are feelings. There is love. I wanted to change. I wanted to have my family back, the family that God had prepared for me. And that is exactly what happens. Joselie and Vanderlei become members of the Grace of God Church, and soon they start feeling the call to become sponsors of the work. Joselie, who at the time got a job as a house cleaner, remembers of her next step. Our daughter had to sleep on the couch because we we lived in a house, the house that had a room. There wasn't a second one. Loving the Lord God and doing the work the right way, there's nothing to complain about them because it doesn't matter if we go through good times, right? We always remain steadfast in the Word of God. Even if we go through hard times, we are still steadfast. We are always certain of the victory. The Bible says that when somebody is okay with the Lord God, even our enemies will feel peaceful with us. We should always be okay with the Lord God. People who have us will come and look for us and they will seek, seek help. So she came, got on her knees and asked God, I want Jesus. I don't know how he got there. Seemed like he was about to commit suicide there. And God entered her life. God impressed her and he will always impress. We have to always expect to be impressed by God. So let's go to the Open Your Heart segment now in the name of Jesus. Dr. Suarez, I suffered from hallucinations a very long time ago. They tormented me every day, and I couldn't sleep well because of them. Thank the Lord, I've been delivered of this evil, but I'm still unable to sleep with tranquility. I have insomnia and a lot of disturbing thoughts. I don't know what to do to get out of the situation. My son is in need of a job, and I believe that God can give him one. Dr. Suarez, I'm in need of guidance. What should I do to change the situation in my life? Help me in prayer. Let me ask you a question. Did you really accept the Lord Jesus and change your life? Because God already proved of his love for you because you don't hallucinate anymore. The insomnia is still there a little. But Jesus said in John 8, 36 says, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. So there are no excuses there. You, you have to strive. God, it is written, show me what I need to do because... King, King David said that when he lays down, he quickly starts to slumber. So it's very tranquil. God will take care of you and you will certainly wake up fresh. And the same thing goes for your son. Sometimes we want our children to abandon drugs, to find a job, to get married, to get rid of, of hair loss, hair loss, to fix this problem or that. But the most important thing is that there is salvation in Jesus. He is salvation. Many times when I ask, they say, not yet. So let's fight for our salvation. After the inside is cleaned up, the outside will also be cleaned up as well. And we have to do this, but be perseverant, be steadfast. God will give you the victory. Let's stand on our feet now so that we can pray. Focus your faith. Those who are at home will receive the prayer first. God, I unite my faith with the faith of those people who are at home now, asking and supplicating for your blessing. And I believe that you will not fail and that you are the truth, that you fulfill what you promise us. I unite my faith with the faith of these people. 
I paralyze all of the works of the enemy and I order you now to take everything that is yours and get out of these lives right now. Get out in the name of Jesus, God. We are now praying. Let's pray right now, brethren. Now it's our time to pray. Those who are here today in church, Pastor Jamie is here and he will be praying with us soon. Dear God, there are many people who need our help. There are many who are unruly, whose life is a mess because they don't listen to your orders. And some of them are even starving and some are unemployed because someone taught them something contradictory to your word, Lord. But these people learn today about the path of obedience. There are many here whose families are suffering so much because they have a lot of needs. And I pray now that you start working wonders in these lives now. My brethren, this is your moment to cry out, to receive, to seek him, for him to operate in you. Don't wait until tomorrow. Now is your time. Let's open up our hearts now. Let's get into battle right now. God, give strength to these people. Just like you gave strength to Israel in the past. Israel never lost a battle. They won all of them because you, O oh God, was with them. Be with these people now, God, like that man who no longer has any craziness, no more hallucinations, but still isn't sleeping very well. And his son, who is in need of a job, but they need more than that. They need Jesus. The entire family is in need of Jesus, God. We are now praying for these families here that are not united. They, they are separated so that they may wake up and get you united. I pray for all of the families that, that are falling apart and are facing serious problems all over in their financial life, in their emotional life. Love isn't present in that home and diseases, O oh Lord. Now we want all of them to be healed now.